Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to Techno Genius. In this lecture, I will discuss about the basic concept of geothermal energy, how geothermal energy work, and what are the basic types of geothermal energy. So let's start. So the basic basic content of this lecture is introduction to geothermal energy, geophysics, crust, mantle, and core, identification of geothermal resources, geothermal. Energy extraction, then geothermal energy resources, then types of geothermal energy, and uh, then analysis. So, what is geothermal energy? The term geothermal energy comes from a Greek word geo and thermal. So, the geo means heat. Uh, sorry, geo means earth, and thermal means heat. And geothermal energy can be used for a variety of application, including electricity generation, heating buildings, and heating pumps. The electricity generated from geothermal energy is clean, reliable, and cost-effective. Geothermal energies are abundant and may considered as a source of energy. Geothermal power plants are very reliable when compared to the conventional power plants. Normally, a geothermal power plant works 99% in a year. So, it can provide an abundant source of energy with minimal in, uh, environmental impact. A geothermal power plant emit no nitrogen oxide, very few sulfur oxide, and between 1000 to 2000 times less carbon dioxide than fossil fuel in 24 hours it can produce it can reduce dependency on the imported fuel and geothermal power plant may be attractive to a developing country since they these require less investment in infrastructure and equipment geothermal energy is produced by natural process uh, occurring within the earth the temperature of the earth increase proportional to the depth at the rate of 30 degree per kilometer at the depth of 3 to 4 kilometer water bubbles up while at the depth of 19 to 15 kilometers the earth interior hotness is approximately equal to 1000 to 1200 degree centigrade the core of the earth consists of a of a liquid rock called magma and its temperature is approximately equal to 4000 degree centigrade the earth core is surrounded by a layer of molten rock or magma which is the major source of geothermal energy it is found in hot spring and they come to earth surface or in the reservoir deep in the ground geothermal energy is mainly found in the rocks terrain of USA, Japan, Russia, New Zealand, Italy, and Mexico. Every geothermal heat flow at the earth surface is 0 0.06 watt per meter square. Geothermal heat is generally of low quality and is best used directly for building or processing heat at about 50 to 70 degrees. Geothermal heat available at temperature above than 150 degree can produce electrical uh, power from the turbine. So the, uh, if we see the statistics then you will understand that the major chunk of geothermal energy is uh, used by the United States which is approximately equal to 3653 megawatt. Then Indonesia, uh, Philippines, Turkey, New Zealand, Mexico, Italy, Kenya, Ireland. Japan and other is 1011. So these are the few statistics of geothermal energy. This is the uh, engine of the geothermal energy. If you see, uh, this is basically this line, this blue line is basically the injection uh, well, and this red line is the production well. From the injection well, we insert water. And from the projection uh, uh, production well, we uh, the water goes uh, to the power plant. And from at the power plant, there is a heat exchanger. And the, from heat exchanger, the power uh, is uh, pa power is generated. If you see, this is the basically uh, 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 drill well, and uh, uh, this well is basically the injection well. While this well is basically the production well, if we want 
extra heat then we will take um, uh, multiple projection uh, protection valves so to, to, to utilize uh, geothermal energy a steady rise of the earth temperature uh, with increased depth is necessary it is called geothermal gratitude so there is an example what is the temperature at the base of 40 km thick gradient uh, uh, granitic crust with a geothermal uh, gradient 30 degree centigrade per kilometer answer is the temperature would be 40 km multiplied by 30 that is 1200 degree centigrade and gradient is temperature divided by D where temperature is uh, T is the temperature D is the depth and G is the temperature gradient now there uh, uh, we will discuss the part of uh, multiple parts of the earth the major part of the earth the uh, center of the earth is basically the core of the earth the interior of the earth or the earth core is extremely hot with a temperature of approximately 4200 degree centigrade or 7600 degree Fahrenheit. The decay of radioactive material in the core is the source of heat. The inner layer of the core is a solid iron core that is surrounded by a molten rock lot known as magma. The heat from, uh, from this hot inner core flow to the cooler outer crust of the earth. The approximately 42, to 42 into 10 is per 12 watt can be captured from the vast amount of the heat. The energy from these heat sources is called geothermal energy sources. The outer core of the magma is surrounded by a mental uh, and approximately 2897 kilometer that is approximately 1800 mile thick the mental layer lies uh, between the innermost layer of the crust and the outer layer of the core the mantle consists of hot dense uh, semi solid rock it is uh, about 2900 kilometer thick heat transfer from the semi fluid mantle maintain a temperature difference across the uh, relatively thin crust of 1000 degree centigrade and mean temperature gradient is 30 degree centigrade per kilometer. Then the crust. The crust is basically the outer most layer of the earth is called crust that is 3 to 5 miles that is 4.82 kilometer to 8 kilometer thick around the ocean and 15 to 35 mile or 24 to 56 thick uh, uh, on the continent. The earth crust is made of a piece of land and ocean called plates. Magma is extended to earth surface near the edge of the plates which uh, where the volcanic uh, activity occur. Volcano is the vent in the earth crust through which the lava, steam, ash, etc are expelled either continuously or irregularly. So uh, if you see this is basically the earth structure, the uppermost layer is basically crust, then the second layer is moho, then upper mantle, then lower mantle, then D layer, then outer core, then liquid solid boundary and then the inner core. So this is basically the structure of the earth. So, uh, if you see the, the, this diagram, then you will understand that the, at the crust, uh, this is the topmost layer and the crust depth is approximately uh, 30 kilometers in the depth. And then we have mental which is which uh, temperature is approximately equal to 100 degree centigrade. And uh, uh, the uh, mental depth is approximately equal to 2,900 kilometers. Then we have the outer core and the outer core depth would be 5,150. So in between 2,900 to 5,150, that is the outer core. And then we have the inner core, which is uh, basically the temperature is 4,000 degrees centigrade. And it is from 5,500 kilometers to 6,370 kilometers. So the identification and the 
quantification of geothermal resources required geological, hydrological, geophysics, and geochemical techniques that allow gather of, uh, gathering of the information regarding the potential use of the specific site. The information is necessary to determine if the site is suitable for development as a geothermal energy source. So the preliminary indication of the presence of geothermal resources is uh, volcanoes uh, uh, or the rupture in the crust. The second is uh, hot spring. The third is femur uh, rolls, a hole in the volcanic region from which the hot gas and the vapor issues. And then the geyser, uh, that is the spring that dramatically spay hot water and the steam. Uh, then uh, uh, drill a wall and test the temperature deep underground in is the only way to ensure that a geothermal reservoir exists. However, a number of other studies prior to the drilling should be performed and these include satellite imagery and aerial photography, then volcanological study, then geological and structural mapping, then geochemical survey, then geophysical survey, then temperature gradient hole drill. Geothermal information is available for most of the countries. So this is the whole geothermal plant. If you see this is basically uh, the injection uh, um, and this is the production rod and from the production we got the steam and from the steam the turbine rotates and from the turbine uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, prime mover rotate and it will produce electricity and that electricity is fed to the grid. So uh, the number one is basically the magma, the second point is basically the reservoir, the third is basically the turbine, the fourth is the generator, fifth is the transformer, sixth is the electrical main and the seventh is the condenser, uh, this is the condenser and eight is the cooling tower. This is the complete structure of the, the geothermal power plant. So if you see, uh, this, is, uh, this is the complete block diagram, uh, this is basically the injection well, this is the production well, this is the geothermal zone and from the projection well it goes to the turbine and then the generator and this is basically the condenser area and this is from the cooling tower. So there are multiple types of geothermal work. The first one is direct steam power plant and direct steam power plant working is shown that they, from the injection, uh, the water flow at the geothermal region and from the geothermal region, the uh, steam uh, will go to the production site and then the turbine rotates and from the turbine generator will produce the electricity and that electricity is to the grid. The second type is flash or double flash type steam and uh, this is basically the flash and double flash type steam. So, uh, uh, if you see uh, this diagram then you will understand that uh, we have uh, the injection valve and the projection valve. From the projection valve uh, we have a small, small box where, where the steam is generated and from the steam it, will, it goes directly to the turbine. If you compare it with the uh, general uh, dry steam, then you will understand that uh, the stream is directly goes to the turbine. And in this case, we have special tank where the steam is stored and then it goes to the turbine. The third type is basically the binary cycle. In the binary cycle, we have special two cycles. One is the uh, one is the inner cycle, and the second one is the outer cycle. The inner cycle is basically the combination of injection well and the production well, and the uh, outer cycle is uh, is with with the turbine, the input of the turbine and the output of the turbine. So when uh, the production well hot uh, hot steam come and this heat uh, transfer occur at this region and from this region the uh, steam will produce and this steam will go to the turbine. This is the most effective way to produce geothermal electrical energy and uh, uh, this is the basic composition of this uh, binary plant. So this is uh, uh, the injection valve and this is a production valve and this is a heat exchanger from the heat exchanger steam is produced and then it goes to the turbine and the turbine rotates and produces electricity. 
thank you hopefully you understand the geothermal uh, uh, energy concept and if you have any query or question you can ask in the comment section thank you jazakallah stay blessed allah hafiz